By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today, you can already see it on your screen, we are going to look at something different, a multiplayer game of Elder Dragon Highlander, of course, old school edition, and here you can see the different commanders that everybody is playing. So we've got Averd on the top left. He's playing with Bartle Rune Axe, a 6-5 creature. That means he'll be playing with the colors black, red, and green. And then next to him is sitting Gideon and he's playing with Solkanar, the Swamp King. That means he's playing with blue, black, and red. And then with the Timmy Playmate is actually not me, it's my buddy Frank. He's playing with Deccan, black blade, white, blue, and black. And then I'm sitting there with the Wood Elemental playmat and I'm playing mono colored, I'm playing mono black Uncle Istvan. So this is just a lot of fun and I'm going to do things a little bit different in this video. Uh, usually I would go to an extensive deck tech. I'm actually not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different decks starting here with my own deck, the Uncle Istvan deck. So here you can see a deck photo. So if you want to know more about this deck, I'll be uh, making a separate deck tech video where I will discuss all these EDH decks, but I still want to show them to you. So for now, you can simply pause and you can have a look at all the cards in this deck. And I wonder if you're going to recognize all of them. Um, there's also an artist proof in here, by the way, made by Anson Maddox. And um, that one is a breeding pit, if you're wondering. But like I said, I'm gonna do an extensive deck tech in a separate episode. Here we see the deck of Avert, so that's Bartle Rune X. And here we see the deck of Gideon Solkanar, the Swamp King. And last but not least, the deck of Frank Deccan Blackblade. Really cool deck photo, by the way, Frank, beautiful. And like I said, you can just pause them, take your time to study them, but there will be a separate episode where I will focus on these decks and I'll talk talk about them with you, talk about what I notice when I'm looking at these decks. Another thing that I would like to point out is that as always, you can find all the information about this match. For example, what rules we are playing, uh, you can all find that in the description below. And there uh, you can also find timestamps, just one timestamp this time reading MTG games that will take you straight to the action. Okay, so uh, this is it for now in the introduction. Now let's go to the games. And let's start the EDH match. I'm so excited. Ah, oh, just great. It was such a great match. Uh, Frank is on the play as we can see here and uh, he can draw a card at the start and he's starting with a basic island. So he's on the Timmy play mat. And we see Gideon there taking uh, a mulligan, putting a card on the bottom. I actually also took a mulligan. And ooh, first play of the game, a Throne of Bone. And uh, I, th I'm, I'm, I feel very lucky that I have this in my opening hand. Throne of Bone, an artifact for one. And every time a black spell is being cast, I can pay one to gain one life. And there are a lot of players playing with black. Actually, all of us have black in our decks. So this could be a, a life cow for me. And there is uh, Kumbach, Kumbach. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but the Witches. 1-3 from Arabian Nights, I can tap it to deal 1 damage to any target, but then the, the person I target can also deal 1 damage back to me or my creatures. So let's take a look. What's Frank doing here? Turn number 3, playing a copy artifact, actually copying my Throne of Bone. That is pretty interesting. So he now has that artifact as well. And I mean, I think that's a good decision. He can start making lots of life. There is a bad moon first life here taken by Frank. And look at that, I'm missing a land drop attacking Avert here. So he's gonna actually drop to 38 because of that bad moon, because all the black creatures now get plus one, plus one. There we see a giant turtle being cast, card from Legends, two four for two green and one. And it has a little downside. If it attacked, it cannot attack again the following turn. You know, it's a turtle, it's slow. It needs some time to recuperate, I guess. Let's see if Gideon can also have a play. Nope, he's the only person on the table that hasn't played out anything yet. He is playing a City of Brass, though. There is another island and a pass turn. I really need lands here. I'm stuck on two swamps. This is not good. Attacking again for two. Looks like this time I'm attacking Gideon here, so he's gonna drop to 38. And passing the turn here, so Avert is on 38. And 
and there's the attack with the turtle he's going to attack frank here so frank's going to take some damage going to drop down to 39 and just checking the card again no plays yet here from gideon he's really waiting what can frank do here looking at his hand and just passing turn not a lot happening yes i found a land happy with that i haven't used my own throne of bone yet that's kind of frustrating hopefully i can start using it i guess i can because i'm tapping out there's a grave robbers two black and one a one one creature from the dark and you can pay one black and tap it and then you can remove an artifact from any graveyard and you can gain two life so it's kind of more ways for me to gain life there is a mana drain so gideon says no and of course i'm attacking him now with my witches to kind of punish him for that decision so he's going to drop the 35 but he's going to gain three mana from that counter spell from that mana drain next turn that means he could potentially cast soul canard the swamp king next turn or maybe he's got something better in hand i wonder what he's going to do so no action from aver just passing turn so remember uh, gideon has those three extra mana what is he going to do with it and going to use the city of brass so it takes the damage from the city of brass and there it is soul canard the swamp king five five swamp walk and he gains a life every time a black card's being cast. This card is my nightmare commander to have against me. Remember, I'm playing mono black. Oh, there we see an animate dead. Now he's animating my grave robbers. So Gideon is gaining life from his own soul canar. Frank is gaining life from my uh, throne of bone. I'm the only one as well. Avert is also not getting any life, but I just don't have the mana. And of course, because of my bad moon to make matters worse, Solkanar is a 6-6. Six, six. This is looking really bad. I mean, already. I've got swamps. Solkanar's got swamp walk. Ah, this is tough. And whenever I play something, I'm going to give him life. I'm missing my land drop again, by the way. Passing turn here to Avert, who seems to have more than enough lands. Look at that. Six lands. Can he play something big? I know his deck with Bartle Rune Axe is full of big, beefy creatures. He's got a giant theme going on. So, and what is he casting here? Is this a Master of the Hunt from Legends? A 2-2. Two, two. And for 2 green and 2, you can put a green wolf token on the battlefield 1-1 one, one, that has banding with other wolves. So, it's, it's pretty cool. You can start making little tokens. And, I mean, worst case scenario, you can chump lock with them. And uh, it's quite interesting. I'm a little bit surprised, actually, that Gideon decided to use his enemy dead on the Grave Robbers. There we see a first attack. He's attacking Frank here. Frank's going to drop to 36. And you can see me making those moves in the corner. I'm like, oh, hell, the Swamp King. I'm, I'm really afraid of that Swamp King. There we see Chaos Orb. Okay, so maybe I can kind of talk Frank into using his Chaos Orb against the Swamp King. Tapping two. What am I casting here? A Walking Dead. Okay. At least that's something. Now remember, they're all getting beefed up, all those black creatures by the Bad Moon, so that Walking Dead is a 2-2. So that is something. And of course, Walking Dead has regeneration for one black. I don't have any regeneration mana open at the moment. A nice thing to point out as well is that the Walking Dead is a zombie. I have a little zombie theme in my deck with the Zombie Master. We see no action again from Aver, but perhaps he just wants to keep mana open to use his Master of the Hunt. And... Uh, Let's see what Gideon can do here. He's kind of looking at my army. And I didn't decide to attack with the witches, by the way. Maybe I just want to keep it on blocking duty. Of course, the witches is a 1-3, but because of the bad moon, it's a 2-4. So it's a pretty decent blocker. Ooh, Earthquake! Ah, that's brutal. I have no mana open to regenerate the Walking Dead. Everything's getting damage. 4 damage to everybody, it seems. Everything is dropping. Looking at the life totals now. Frank 33. I'm on 37. Avert 34. Gideon strength enough pretty low. And there he goes. He's attacking with the Sulkanar. Dealing even more damage. And uh, wow. This is a pretty strong opener. We're all attacking a ring of immortals. That's such a funny card. Three and tap and it counters. I mean, counters target interrupt or enchantment. Can only counter spells which target a permanent under your control. Okay. So it's kind of protection for Gideon. Uh, sorry, for, for Frank. 
It's Frank's card, and now he's passing turn, so I'm untapping there with my Wood Elemental playmat. Looking at my cards in hand, trying to decide what to do. I mean, my board's just been wiped out. I'm still pretty low on lands, only three lands. Oh, now I find my Zombie Master. <laughs> oh, man, so my Zombie Master would have given my Walking Dead Swamp Walk and Regeneration, which it already has, but still, it's pretty good. There we see a Lady of the Mountain, such a cool card. It's a 5-5. Five -five. And I didn't notice, but Aver told me this. It's actually a giant as well. So this is a really big, beefy creature. And uh, remember, for Avert, the Solkanar is also scary because, as you can see, Avert has swamps, Solkanar has swamp walk. So hopefully, I can work together a little bit with Avert here, because there we can see an attack with the Swamp King onto Avert. So he's going to drop all the way to 28. What else? Can oh, flash fires! And there's only one person with planes, and it's not me, luckily. Look at Frank go. And I have to say, Gideon, I really respect your playstyle because you're like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna create havoc. I'm gonna try to kill everybody. I don't care. Like he's just attacking every single turn, and it's actually also something that we. That's kind of our style. We're like, okay, we're playing EDH, but we're not gonna play it passively. We're just, if we've got the cards, we're gonna attack. And just a pass journey from Gideon. This is horrible, of course, for him. All of a sudden, he only has blue, only three blue islands. And I mean, he seems kind of stuck. He's passing turn. I found at least another swamp, so that's good. I've now got four mana. I could play my commander. I could play Istvan, Uncle Istvan, a 1-3. And remember, everything it blocks or all the damage it takes is reduced to zero. So it can attack and block with no problem. There we see a fear and I'm gaining some life. Everybody's gaining life actually, except for Averett. It's kind of a weird scenario. Um, Gideon is gaining life because I'm casting a black spell, which is fear. Frank still has his copy of my Throne of Bone with the copy artifact, so he gains life and I gain life because of my Throne of Bone. There we see an attack. There's just a lot happening here. Lady of the Mountain attacking and we see an anime dead on Master of the Hunt and a Jade statue getting into play. Wow, there's a lot of action and a lot of pain for Gideon actually being on 26. He's the lowest at the table at the moment. Frank being at 35, I'm at 33, Avert at 28. Let's see what Gideon can do now. I would just put out some blockers, to be honest. Kind of put some things out to stop the bleeding. And there we see a Tetravus. That is actually quite nice. Another damage though because of the City of Brass. So it's a 4-4 flyer. He's probably going to keep the Solkanar at blocking duty because if he attacks again, he, he has to risk that Avert is going to attack him with the Lady of the Mountain. So it's probably better just to uh, to wait a moment and keep it on defense. So he is passing turn here. There we see some really sweet tokens from Citadel Gaming. I made a nice video about that, by the way, if you're interested in tokens and the history of tokens. And let's see what Frank can do. Oh, he's got to discard. That's so dirty. Ah, Frank, that's so bad, man. That flesh fires really set you back. I just hope you're going to draw into some lands. At least you've got some, some life gain going and you've got the Chaos Orb as kind of a political tool. Drawing another land. Now I'm casting my Uncle Istvan and I'm using my Throne of Bone to gain a life. Going to go up to 34. Again, all my opponents, almost all my opponents except for Avert, are gaining life as well. And, uh, well... It's looking pretty good for me, actually. I'm on 34. It's not too bad, especially when you uh, take into account that I didn't draw a lot of lands. And what's happening here? Ooh, Disintegrate! This is great news for me that Disintegrate is going to set Gideon back. And he doesn't have enough lands yet to recast it. Remember, every time it dies, it goes back to the command zone. You see a counter being placed on the commander, meaning he has to pay two mana extra to cast it again. There we see Gideon taking off the counters from his Tetravis. So he's now got little Tetravites, three 1-1 one -one flyers, and of course Tetravis itself is now a 1-1 one -one flyer. So he's, he's he's got some blocking power. I wonder if he's going to attack with it. The three tokens have summoning sickness, by the way, but he could attack with the Tetravis. I don't have flyers. Frank doesn't have flyers. I think nobody has flyers, actually, except for Gideon. Aver doesn't have flyers. So he could attack. Only do one damage, though, but still... And he's playing a Suchi, 4-4 from the Antiquities. And when it dies, you get 4 mana. I'm actually not sure. I don't think we're playing with Mana Burn, but maybe we should in this rule set. I'm not quite sure. There is a Plains from Frank, so at least he's finding some lands. Hopefully that can help him. 
but he's just passing turn and I'm tapping a swamp here and playing a will o the wisp taking life everybody's gaining life again oh actually Gideon is not gaining life because the Sulkanar is no longer on the battlefield but of course will o the wisp a great blocker for me it, it's got flying and one black to regenerate it so that's great and it's now a one two because of the bad moon and let's see what Aford's gonna do. I mean, he's, he's got some creatures. He can start making some tokens with that Master of the Hunt that he got back with the anime dead. He's got the Lady of the Mountain, which is a 5-5. Five five. For example, he could attack Frank, who's still pretty high up. He's on like 32. I think it's gonna be tough for him to attack me. There's a Hurricane for one. Okay. Now we're doing business. I'm actually regenerating my Willow, but I don't have to because my Willow is a 1-2 regenerating it anyway but look at Gideon's board all his flyers are gone because of that hurricane for one pretty good move by Averett is he now also going to attack with that lady of the mountain I wonder what he's going to do it looks like he's going to attack me and I'm just going to block on Uncle Istvan so I think a little a misplay here from Averett but hey it happens you don't play against these cards every day and uh you know at the end of the day both of our creatures live so no worries no harm no foul Gideon looking at his hand. He's tapping quite a lot. He's recasting Solkanar. He's found enough lands to do so. Solkanar now being um, seven to cast. He's got exactly seven lands. And the problem is back. All hail the king. There we see a mana vault from Frank. You know, I mean, Frank's not doing much, but on the positive side for him, he's not dying either. He's still on 32, which is pretty high up. And uh, he almost has the highest life total of the table. So as long as he can stay in it, attacking Gideon, it seems for one, not sure if that's the best idea. Maybe I want to keep that Willow on blocking duty, playing a Ring of Renewal for five. Card from Fallen Empire is pretty good. You can do five and tap, discard a card at random and draw two cards back. And uh, here we see Averett making a Wolves of the Hunt token. So a 1-1. One, one, Wolf, and there's a Diamond Valley. Diamond Valley, really good card from Arabian Nights. Tap one, sacrifice a creature, gain life equal to the toughness of that creature. And of course, he can do that in response. And he's also casting a Tetravis. So, wow, look at Aphrod's board. It's completely full. I know it's really hard to see what those cards are. That's why I keep showing them on screen for you and trying to explain what they are. It's really difficult to see. It's because he's furthest away from the camera. And... Um, but hey, I think we kind of know what's on his board. It's a lot of creatures. And again, I'm making these gestures towards Sulkanar. Oh, hell, the Sulkanar! I'm, I'm really, like, nervous about it. And I think my strategy at this point is kind of trying to put a lot of creatures on board. So to kind of to say to Gideon, if you attack me, I'm going to hit you back and you're going to have more pain. So maybe it's not a good idea to attack me. I mean, remember, you know, EDH is also politics in a fun way, right? So you keep kind of talking nonsense to each other, trying to change each other's minds. And, and the best thing that can happen to you is when two players start attacking each other and you're not one of those two players, obviously. Tapping lots of swamps here, it seems. Four swamps. Ooh, and two blue, casting a Mahamoti Jin, 5-6 flyer, beautiful creature. And he's attacking me. Oh, no. And I'm dropping to 29 here, taking 6 damage. You remember that bad moon? So going under the 30 life. So only Frank is uh, is on 30 plus. Ooh, playing a Vesuvan double ganger, using the mana from his mana vault. And he's copying Solkanar to Swamp King. So right now, Frank also has a Solkanar to Swamp King. So that's pretty good news for Frank. So now he's got a good blocker, he's got a Chaos Orb as kind of a political tool, and he's pretty high, and he's going to gain more life because of his Sulkanar. So it's not too shabby. And now it's my turn. It looks like I'm kind of looking around, trying to figure out what to do. I mean, I don't want to really attack with the Willow. need that to block. I need my Uncle Istvan to block. I can just keep my mana open for my Ring of Renewal, and maybe on the end step of Frank, activate my Ring of Renewal. That could definitely be an option. There's just not much I can do exactly. I'm just passing turn here. And uh, even though I've got five lands, which seems to be quite a lot, it's still not that much, especially for this phase of the game. If you're looking at, you know, Averett's board or Gideon's board. Ooh, Hammerheim. That's so cool. With Hammerheim, it gives you red, but you can also tap it to remove a landwalk ability. So he can actually use his Hammerheim to remove the landwalk ability of Sulkanar. And it looks like he's going to attack now. He's going to attack with Tetravis and Lady of the Mountain. 
And I think Lady of the Mountain is coming towards Frank here. Actually, both creatures are coming towards Frank. Frank pretty high up on life. This is kind of an interesting move by Avert because Lady of the Mountain is a 5-5 five five and uh, the Soul Canard, the Swamp Queen, is actually a 6-6 six six because of that Bad Moon. So Frank could decide to block here with the Vesuvian Doppelganger that is actually a Soul Canard, but he's deciding not to. He's taken the damage and he's dropping a lot. He's taking 9 damage. He's dropping to 23. So this can go really, really fast. And I think we're still kind of discussing, you know, that blocking would have been an option. I think he's a little bit afraid of a pump spell and he really doesn't want to lose his Soul Canard to Swamp King. Which I kind of understand because it's, it's going to give him life and it's just a good blocker. He doesn't have a lot, but part of me, and I think Avert was hoping the same, that um, Frank would start using his Chaos Orb. But he wants to keep that orb and I understand why. Let's see what Gideon's going to do here. Tapping two blue. Or not, untapping two blue again. I wonder what, he's, what he wants to do with the two blue. Okay, he's going to tap six instead. Oh, Triskelion! Of course, the 4-4 four, four powerhouse. And we've got really nice uh, trike arms, as you can see on the photo. Those are actually the arms I'm putting on there now. They're sent to me by my buddies from the Rhineland Avengers. So shout out to you guys. And as you can see, I'm using your tokens. And uh, your counters, I should say. They're beautiful, man. And uh, so that means the three arms placed on the trike. In case you don't know, those are plus one, plus one counters. But you can also choose to shoot those counters up and deal one damage to any target. So three counters means three damage. And you can just shoot them one at a time. You don't have to shoot them all together. Uh, Frank, by the way, now taking his turn, taking a damage from the Mana Vault. And ah, this is so painful. Having to discard a Nettling Imp. So end step of Frank here, I'm using... My Ring of Renewal having to randomly discard a card. So there's a Banshee gone. Banshee, a card from the dark. And, uh, you know, I'm fine losing the Banshee for two new cards. No problem. And let's see, what am I playing there? I'm, oh, a Royal Assassin. I'm casting a Royal, gaining a life from it as well. And, of course, uh, Gideon and also Frank are gaining a life as well. But this Royal Assassin is really good. That Royal is a great politic politic tool here. Attack me, I might kill something, you know. It's really interesting. And now it's Avert's turn and he's kind of looking at the board. What to do? I mean, he's got such a full board. If we go through it, he's got Lady of the Mountain, which is a 5-5. Five five. He's got Tetravis, which is a 4-4 four four flyer. He's got a Master of the Hunt that he can use to make wolf tokens with. He's got two 1-1 one one wolf tokens that can band with each other. Um, you know, so he just has a lot. And he also has a Jade Statue. That's the card he's moving right now. Impossible to see, by the way. But it's a Jade Statue. Jade Statue is a card you can pay two and it turns into a 3-6 creature and you can only do that during combat. So it's kind of a statue, just an artifact, and then you can turn it into an artifact creature. And um, we see Aver now kind of asking me about my blockers. So it looks like he wants... Yeah, he's pointing right the finger at me. He wants to attack me, which makes sense. I've got the highest life total of the table. And it's kind of tough to attack me because I've got so many good blockers. Right now, I'm thinking, do I want to block with the Willow? If I block with the Willow on the Tetravis, I have to regenerate the Willow to Wisp, deciding not to do it. Why? Because, I'm, ooh, there's a Giant Grove. I believe, is that on the Lady of the Mountain? So I'm losing my Zombie Master. That's annoying because I'm playing with a lot, a lot of zombies. But what I wanted to say is the reason I'm not blocking with my Willow is I want to keep that mana open to possibly block the Mahamoto Jin of Gideon next turn. Remember, I'm on the highest life total. Well, not anymore now. I've dropped to 26. But, you know, I just want to make sure I can block that big Mahamoto. And uh, there we see Frank kind of looking at the tokens. I'm like, no, don't attack me, man. Don't do it. Of course, he can use two counters from his Triskelion to kill the Royal Assassin. I think we're kind of discussing that. I'm saying, you know, I'm not going to use the Royal against you necessarily. You know, so we're kind of talking about that. Ooh, Transmute Artifact from Antiquity. So much happening in this game. So Transmute Artifact, uh, a two blue to cast, uh, and he's sacking his Suchi, and that means he can look up another artifact for four or less and put it into play. If the casting cost of the artifact is more than four, he can simply pay the extra amount of mana. So for example, you now sack the Suchi, which is four to cast. If he would look up an... Um, I don't know, a, a card of five, then he just has to pay one extra uh, uh, mana. 
but he can only look up artifacts. And here we see that he's looked up Tonus' coffin. And I know why, because see that trike? Trike Tonus' coffin? You probably know what I'm talking about. Tonus' coffin, you can use the coffin to put a creature, uh, to exile a creature basically, put it in the coffin. And then when you untap the ca coffin, the creature comes back into play tapped and all the enter the battlefield triggers trigger again. So all the ETB triggers as they call it. So in this case, he can put the Triskelion into the coffin, untap the coffin again, and then the trike comes back into play. And again, it gets it gets three new counters. So all of a sudden it becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. So this, this coffin, it could be a huge problem. There we see Frank discarding again, untapping the manifold, discarding his howl from beyond. I kind of feel sorry for Frank here. He's not doing a lot. And uh, I'm actually hoping that, that Frank is willing to use his Chaos Orb on the Tonus' coffin. But I'm not really sure how I can convince him to do that. Anyway, it's my turn. Played out another land. Tapping a lot of mana. What are we going to get here? Ooh, Demonic Hordes. That's so cool. Demonic Hordes is a 5-5. Five five. You got to pay 3 black during your upkeep. Or else it taps itself and it destroys one of my lands. So that's not cool. But the cool thing is I can tap the Hordes to kill... A land. I can just destroy a land on the spot. So this again is a great tool for EDH. You know, if you attack me, I'm gonna destroy your land. I guess. Yeah, so you're not gonna attack me, are you? It's so it's so fun to play with these cards. Of course, the big problem for me is the demonic hordes is gonna cost me three during my upkeep. That's the that's the cost to the upkeep cost for the card. So that's gonna set me back land-wise. And look at that board state of Avery. There's so much, but who is he gonna attack? Maybe through the air he could attack Frank. I wonder if he wants to. I mean, you don't want to. You don't want to put Frank too low. You kind of need him as well to kind of battle that Gideon army there. And I, I think the biggest problem of the table is actually the Tonus's coffin, because that's kind of you know really good synergy with the Triskelion. There we see another attack. It seems not quite sure who he's attacking. Is he attacking Frank here? So he's offering a trade again. He's attacked Frank before. So he's attacking with a 3-6 Jade Statue, 5-5 five, five Lady of the Mountain, and a 4-4 four, four Tetravis. And there we see a block on the Lady of the Mountain. So Lady of the Mountain dies, or at least it's blocked. Let me put it that way. Maybe he wants to use his uh, Diamond Valley to gain life. And there's going to be a flip. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm offering Frank to kill a creature of his choice with my Royal Assassin if he flips on the, the Tonus' coffin, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And in response, uh, Gideon is putting uh, the, uh, the trike into the coffin. Now the trike gets destroyed. Oh, sorry, the coffin gets destroyed. That means the trike comes back into play with six plus one plus one counters on it. So I'm destroying the Tetravis, as I promised to Frank. In response, Avert is using his Diamond Valley to gain life. So there's just there's so much, so much happening. And I think Lady of the Mountain is still being blocked, by the way. And what is he doing? Is there a pump spell? No, it's a reincarnation. Oh, that's so sweet. So reincarnation, if one of your creatures dies, you can play reincarnation. And you can basically trade creatures. So you can do the creature that's going to die. You can use that to bring back another creature. In this case, Avert is using reincarnation to get back Tetravis. Wow, there's just so much happening here. So when all the dust has kind of settled, what we see is that Avert lost his Lady of the Mountain, but gained a lot of life. He's back on 32. And, um, you know, Frank took some damage, gone to 22, but it could be worse. And Gideon lost his little trick with the Taunus' coffin. So I think that's really good for the table. I wonder now if, if Gideon's going to do something against my Royal. You know, oh, on the other hand, he, he doesn't have to do that right now. It's probably better for him just to have a 7-7 seven, seven huge creature. So he's going to attack you. Who's he, who is he attacking? Oh, look at that. So we see Avert is using the Hammerheim to take away the Swampwalk ability from Solkanar. I think Solkanar is attacking me? I think so. It looks like I've just blocked on my Istvan, so I'm not taking any damage. So I've decided not to block on my Demonic Hordes. That's kind of interesting. Maybe I don't want to risk it. Of course, he can then use a counter from his strike to kill my hordes, and I don't want that. Okay, that's probably why I wasn't blocking on the hordes. But really interesting to see Avert kind of meddling there, using his Hammerheim to take away that Landwalk ability uh, from the Solkanar, the Swamp King. And now, of course, I can use 
my royal assassin if I want to, to kill the Solknar. The problem is if I do that, ooh, here we see an icy manipulator. That is pretty sweet. In response, he's going to kill my royal. And in response, I'm going to use my royal to kill his Solknar, the Swamp King. Yeah, that was kind of, I knew that he was going to do it. So I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm going to be proactive. I'm not going to wait till what's happened, what's going to happen. I'm just going to play out my Icy Manipulator with my Royal on the board. And I'm just going to, you know, challenge Gideon to do something. And he did, which is understandable. But now his Solkanar, the Swamp King, is back to the command zone. So he now has to pay nine if he wants to recast it. And let's see what Avert can do. He's got so many lands. Look at that. Tapping three. Casting Wheel of Fortune. Sweet. So everybody, ooh and ooh, we see a lightning bolt there on my willow. Oh man, because I was tapped out. The problem is when you're playing with black and you're playing with, you know, Lord of the Pits and cards like that, in this case, Demonic Hordes, you've got a lot of upkeep cost, right? So it's really difficult for me to get enough mana open to pay for just regeneration fees. Uh, anyway, lost my willow to Wisp here. Lost my hand, but I mean, I got to draw... Seven fresh cards. It's not too bad. I still got my Icy. Got a lot of artifacts. I've got my Ring of Renewal. I've got Uncle Istvan to block with. I'm taking some damage for the air. Gonna go to 22. I guess the air is still kind of my weak point here. So Avert attacking. And is he gonna play anything out? There's a Soul Ring. Not really impactful at this moment. And what else is he going to do? Tapping. And okay, casting a Giant Spider at 2-4. Can block creatures with flying, even though it doesn't have flying uh, itself. Kind of the first creature. It is the first creature with reach. That's where reach came from, basically, from the giant spider. Very flavorful, you know. The old the old school cards are just so flavorful. And ooh, there we see Gideon killing Master of the Hunt here, taking off the counters. Looks like he doesn't really care much for the counters. And I wonder if he wants to, if that shows something. Does he have a plan? Does he want to sack the Triskelion? Does he want to do something with it? There is another land. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So he could recast Solkanar. Ooh, playing a Shatterstorm. That is really good. Losing so many good artifacts. This is a really good Shatterstorm. I'm losing my Icy Manipulator, my Ring of Renewal. And of course, Frank is also losing his artifacts as well, his uh, Throne of Bone, Mana Vault, and also his Ring of Immortals. So this Shatterstorm is doing some serious work. And we see Avert here, of course, using his Diamond Valley to sack the biggest creature, again gaining more life. The Diamond Valley is doing so much work. Ooh, Black Vice! With Black Vice, you have to choose one opponent when you cast it. And you saw that finger from Gideon, he chose me. I got 7 in hand, I want 22. It looks like I'm going to drop under the 20 life. And then my life total is the lowest of the table. And there's an attack with the Mahamoti Jin towards Avert, it seems. So he's going to drop. And what else? There we have an underground sea. So that means black mana now, actually. I just said that, but now I realize that this is the first time that Frank has all the color mana of his deck. And, okay, he chooses to play an Ivory Tower just for one. Card from Antiquities, that is going to help him a little bit. It's going to give him some life, probably. So for all cards above four in hand, he's going to gain one life. I believe he's got seven in hand at the moment. And there we see an attack for six. That means that Avert's going to drop to 25 here. And there we see a Wall of Air. And now I'm using... I'm destroying a land there with my Demonic Hordes, of course, on the side of Gideon because he targeted me with the Black Vice. I'm taking the damage from the Vice, going to drop to 19. Playing a Siphon Soul. Sweet! Siphon Soul, one black and two, deals two damage to all my opponents. And I'm gone, gaining life for all the damage dealt by Siphon Soul. So I'm getting six life back. So dealing six damage, getting six life back, this is great value. I'm now at 25. My players, opponents are going down. This is good, but I still need a flyer. I mean, look at that huge Mahamoti Jin. And I'm attacking Gideon for two here just because I can. And there's a Shatter, I believe, on the Ring of Renewal by Avert. So uh, it's kind of looking like we've balanced out the board again. 
The big problem here is we still have one Soul Canard of Swamp King on the side of Frank. And I think I really have to keep an eye on the amount of lands of Gideon. Maybe I can get him low enough that he cannot recast Soul Canard. Ooh, Bartle Rune Axe, 6 5. Bartle Rune Axe, and it's, it doesn't have to tap when it's attacking. So there we see the commander of Frank coming, of, sorry, of Avert coming into play. And there we see some damage or not. Oh, we see the life, of course, life gain by Frank because Bartle is also a black creature. So he's going to gain one life because of that Sulkanar Vesuvian double ganger. If you can still follow what's going on. And uh, Gideon now taking a turn. He's on 22, it seems pretty low, actually. He's the lowest on the table together with Frank. Averts on 23, so it's all pretty close. Of course, he still has that Diamond Valley. I feel like I have to destroy the Diamond Valley with my Demonic Hordes. I just have to do it. Ooh, he's going to recast the Sulkanar. That is so bad. That Sulkanar, I mean, I like Gideon's way of playing. He just always wants to do something, and he's very active. He's like, I'm just going to cast the Kanar again. I'm going to do it again and again and again. And, uh, of course, Frank gaining a life because of his Soul Canar. The Soul Canar is also a black creature. Oh, man. Frank is gaining so much life this, uh, this game, you know. First with the uh, Throne of Bone and now with the Ivory Tower. And, of course, with his own copy of Soul Canar. And I'm kind of showing if you attack me, I'm going to use my Demonic Hordes on you. Don't attack me. Oh, and also Frank is playing his commander. That's Deccan Blackblade. And uh, it's got power and toughness equal to the amount of lands that Frank controls, so it's now a 6-6. And I'm actually rolling the dice. Maybe you're wondering why. I wanted to use my Demonic Horse, but I didn't know who to target, so I decided to do a dice roll to decide. Taking damage again from the vice, dropping to 23, playing another Swamp, tapping 4 here. Can I do... And... Ooh, Taggle Maggot! This is such a funny card. 2 black and 2 enchant creature. During the upkeep, the enchant creature gets min all, minus all, minus one. And then when the creature dies, Taggle Maggot goes to a new creature. So the, the controller of that creature can choose a new target when that creature dies. So if Taggle Maggot, after six turns, which is long, I know, the Mahamoti dies and then, um, you know, Gideon can put the Taggle Maggot on another creature of his choice. Probably one of my creatures, but we'll see. And uh, I'm passing turn here. And of course, I, all my opponents are gaining life again. This is so... I mean, Soul Canar the Swamp King is such a good card against my Mono Black deck. It's the worst for me. Everything I cast, I'm basically giving life to my opponents. And I don't want to do that. But there's nothing I can do. And get in here, checking out the board of Avert. And I really think I have to start using the Demonic Hordes against... Um, against the Diamond Valley of Avert. Then again, I don't really, I mean, I don't want to get Avert against me. I've got the Uncle Istvan, though, as a blocker. It looks like Avert doesn't have a lot of flyers in his deck. So that Uncle Istvan is a really good blocker for me. And is he going to attack here with a giant spider? So he's attacking with the giant spider and Bartle Runex. It's coming, both is coming my way. And I'm wondering now, do I want to block? So I'm using my Uncle Istvan to block Bartle, and I'm taking the two damage from the spider. You're maybe wondering why not block on the 6-6 six, six hordes. I'm a little bit afraid that maybe he's got another pump spell or something. I just really don't want to lose the hordes. It's just such a great tool. On the other hand, I mean, I'm on 21. I need to start blocking, you know. Avert already played his Giant Grove, so maybe he's just bluffing. Well, we'll just have to see. First is Gideon's turn, taking a damage from his own City of Brass. Ooh, Old Man of the Sea. Pretty cool. He can tap it to take control of target creature with power equal or less than the Old Man. So he can actually use Old Man of the Sea to steal my Uncle Istvan. Man, Gideon, you've got such an annoying deck. First, he had the Thomas's Coffin. That was a huge problem. Solkanar has been a huge problem since the start of the game. And now he's got Old Man of the Sea, which can steal my commander. I don't want that. I want to keep my commander. He's also casting a Chaos Sword, by the way, to make matters even worse. And uh, now he's looking at my creature. Is he going to attack me here? Five for the air. No, he's going to attack Frank. Okay, at least he's not targeting me yet. So Frank is now back on 23 because of his Ivory Tower. 
What can he do? At least finding some more lands. That is good. Okay, tapping three. Tapping four. No. Changing his mind. <laughs> I'm going to untap everything again. I wonder what he's going to do. He's, he, his Vesuva Doubleganger is a Soul Canard, the Swamp King. His Deccan is a 5-5, five, five, so I think he's not. Okay, so he's attacking with the Soul Canard, the Swamp King. I think he's attacking Gideon. Oh, and look at that. He's using his Hammerheim again. Going to remove the Landwalk ability. And that means that Gideon can block with his Drudge Skeletons. It's a 1-1 one, one who's got one black to regenerate. Wow. And there is a Half Dane. It's such a cool card. So Half Dane is a 3-3. Three, three, and during your upkeep, you can decide to turn the power and toughness of Half Dane into the power and toughness of target creature on the board. So it's kind of like a Vesuvian Double Ganger, but it only copies power toughness. So for example, if your opponent has a Leviathan in play, you can copy the Leviathan and you only have the power and toughness copy, so it's an 11-11, but you don't have to uh, pay the upkeep cost or sack any islands. So it could be handy in certain circumstances. And on the end step of Frank, I'm killing the Diamond Valley. And at the same time, I'm telling Avery, you know, it's nothing personal, I have to do it. And yeah, oh man. So I've taken care of that Diamond Valley. I am on 20 because of Black Vice damage. Okay, playing a Wall of Bone, a 1-4 with one black to regenerate. So again, another good blocker. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't have flying. I mean, the problems for me right now... Oh, what else am I playing? Okay, that's just a 2-2 two -two Vanilla Headless Horseman. Really cool art by Quentin Hoover. And cool flavor text. But the problem for me are really the, the flying, the Mamoti Jin, and of course the Sulkanar, the Swamp Kings that are on the table. Two Sulkanar, the Swamp Kings. Ooh, tapping a lot. Oh, <laughs> Rock Hydra. How big is that Rock Hydra? I'm just going to wait until he counts it up. I don't know, 10 10? 12 12, Rock Hydra. Wow, that is big. I wonder if Half Dane can now copy it. And that it then becomes a 12-12. Because it, it doesn't copy the ability of the creature. It only cop copies the power and toughness. So I think he can copy the power and toughness of Hydra. But if he would, for example, use his Vesuvian Doubleganger to copy the, um, the Hydra, then the Vesuvian Doubleganger is going to die because it's a 0-0. Zero -zero. So it's kind, of, it's kind of complicated. Anyway, let's first see what, uh, what Gideon's going to do. As you can see, Tackle Maggot is doing work, slowly but surely. There is a Phantom Monster. Really cool. 3-3 three, three Flyer. And what else is he going to play? Ooh, Sage of Latinam. Sage of Latinam, actually kind of nice because I think my hand's almost empty. So Vice is not going to work. Look at that. I've got three cards. So what he could do with Sage is just sack the Black Vice to draw a card. And there's an attack with the Mahamoti. It looks like he's attacking. Yeah, he's attacking Avert. Avert's jump blocking with the Giant Spider. That means he's still on 23. He's not taking any damage. And now it looks like he's going to copy the Hydra's power and toughness. That is pretty funny. So it's now 12-12. So we've got two 12-12s on the board. We've got uh, uh, three 6-6s six on the board because those Sulkanars are 6-6s. Six -six. Four actually because my Demonic Hordes are 6-6. Six -six. So we've got huge creatures. And I, I really think that everything in the air kind of dominates at the moment. More life for Frank here from his own ivory tower. I wonder what he's going to do. First drawing a card, of course. Is he maybe still looking for a second black? It's kind of hard to, kind of, to see his hand. You can see little bits and bobs of it, but... Is that disenchant in hand? What to do with the disenchant? Now, we just wait then for Chaos Orb activation if it's a disenchant. I'm not sure. And Frank really in the tank here thinking, do I want to attack somebody? What's, what's going to be the consequence? I guess he could attack with the 12-12. He could, for example, well, uh, Gideon has a regeneration. I have regeneration. And Avert's got a 12-12, so he can offer a trade. Okay, on the end step, I'm, of course, going to destroy something again. I wonder what I'm going to do. I've targeted Avert before, so I guess I should now target... Gideon, um, I, I said to the table, you know what? The Hortz wants to eat, so I'm going to eat something every turn. And yeah, I'm just going to eat the Mishra's Factory. 
And I'm gonna untap, of course I have three swamps tapped. Why? I'm paying for the upkeep cost of my demonic hordes. So let's see, tapping four. Ooh, yeah, this is a cool card, Knowledge Vault. Um, it's kind of like a Jam Day Tome way, kind of. It's four to cast, it's two and tap. You take a card from your library without looking and place it face down under the Knowledge Vault. Then when you sacrifice your Knowledge Vault, so you can do that multiple times, right? So you can have like three, four, five cards under Knowledge Vault, doesn't matter. Then when you sacrifice the Knowledge Vault, you have to discard your hand and you get all the cards under the Knowledge Vault. If Knowledge Vault gets destroyed, the cards actually go to your graveyard, which I think is pretty good. You know, they don't go to exile, they go to your graveyard. So I think Knowledge Vault is one of those cards, it doesn't see a lot of play, but maybe it should. Um, I've also played another Shadow, by the way. So that's the 1-1 one, one creature with, uh, with haste, actually. You can attack the turn, it comes into play. Of course, completely useless right now. And uh, I'm passing the turn here. Looks like Avert wants to do something. He's looking around, he's like, I've got a 12-12 creature, I want to attack. And of course, a pretty big Bartle Runex. That's now a 7-6 because of the Bad Moon. But the board's really clocked up at the moment. I mean, I think we just need a board wipe or something. There we see Taggle Maggot continue to do work. So that Mahmoudi Jin is now a 5-3. So it's, it's in bolt range. That's something. I wonder who he's going to attack. I still have no flying blocker. I mean, I'm on 20. If he hits me for 5, that would be pretty brutal. He could use the Sage, I guess, to eat up his own Black Vice, because I only have one card in hand anyway. Let's see what he's going to do. He also wants to attack with the Phantom, it seems. Aver doesn't have any Flyers, so he could also decide to attack Aver here. I mean, the world would look so different if, if Gideon wouldn't have the Dredge Skeleton. That Dredge Skeleton is just amazing. It looks like he's attacking... Is he attacking me with the Mahamoti or Avert? And he's also attacking with Solkanar the Swamp King here. So it looks like he's attacking me with Solkanar the Swamp King. No, with the Mahamoti. So I'm going to drop to 15. And he's dropping... He's attacking Frank. And Frank's taking 6 damage. So he's going to drop to 23. Okay, so Gideon doing work here. Not attacking with the Phantom Monster. Interesting. Could have attacked with the Phantom Monster. Could have attacked Avert, for example, and then deal damage to all the players on the battlefield. That would have been kind of cool. Except himself, of course, but... And here we see Frank changing his Vesuvan Doubleganger into the Mahamoti Jin. Interesting. So it's now a 5-6 Flyer. He's also gaining life again from that Ivory Tower. He's gained so much life considering how often we've attacked him. He's still pretty high up. And now he's attacking Gideon with his Mahamoti. And Gideon taking the damage here from the Mahamoti through the air. So Gideon dropping to 21. There is a Sarah Angel. And I mean, it's, it's starting to look really good for Frank. It took a long time before he started to have enough lands to actually do something. But you see this more often. Because he can do a lot, as soon as he can do something, he's got a lot of cards in hand, of course because he wasn't able to play them out earlier, and that's now really playing in, into his advantage. And he's passing turn to me. Let's see, I've used my Demonic Hordes, by the way, to take care of the Underground Sea. Oh, Lord of the Pit! 7-7, seven, seven, Flying Trample for 7. I also have to sacrifice something along the way, but who cares? And I'm pointing to my, uh, my Nether Shadow. Nether Shadow, right? Like I said, it's just a 1-1, one, one, like a 2-2 two, two now with haste. But the cool thing is, when it's in your graveyard and as soon as it has four creatures on top of it, you can put it back onto the battlefield during your upkeep. So it's really nice to use as a sac uh, creature for, um, for the Lord of the Pit. So that's why I was pointing to my Nether Shadow. It's kind of a little synergy I've got in my deck. Anyway, the uh, Lord of the Pit is now an 8-8, eight, eight, of course. And Avert not doing much, just passing turn. And on the end step, we see Gideon here sacking, using the Sage to sack the Black Vice to draw an extra card. Makes sense. Black Vice has done its work. Wow, and look at that. Another counter on Mahamoti Jin. Taggle Maggot has almost eaten up the Mahamoti from the inside. It's very gruesome. Art by Anson Maddox. And there we see the hand of Gideon. He's got Fire Elemental, Detonate, and Chain Lightning. We see Avert going through his graveyard. I wonder if he's got he's got anything good in there. 
Is there somebody at the table with, for example, an, an enemy dead? Does he want to use that old man of the sea? I mean, he, he, can steal, he can still steal my Uncle Istvan, which I think would be pretty good for him. I don't want him to do it, of course. But it's just a great blocker to have, and you're taking a creature away from one of your opponents, one of, one of my best blockers, so... I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, Detony can also deal some damage. So he's looking at his hand again. He's got more than enough mana. He could, of course, attack with this flyer. But maybe he wants to have it on blocking duty against its Sarah Angel. Remember, he's on 22. Which is, you know, it, it may sound like a lot of life, but if you start it on 40, and, and when you look at the creatures here, so he is attacking, using a phantom monster here to attack Avert, and the Mahamoti Jin, is it coming my way or is it coming Frank's way? That's the question here. And also attacking with Sulkanar. It looks like he's attacking Frank here with the Sulkanar. Or, no, he's attacking me with the Sulkanar and he's using his Hammerheim. So I can block and kill his Sulkanar, the Swamp King. Wow. Ooh, Chain Lightning. Losing my Lord of the Pit. And he's attacked Frank, by the way, with the Mahamoti Jin. And uh, Frank took the damage here, going down to 21, and also Gideon playing a um, Fire Elemental. And that Hammerheim is so interesting, because what happens, because of course you don't hear the audio right now, but what happened during the match is Avert was like, you know what, I can take his land walk away if you kill him, if you block him lethal. So I, I blocked on the, um, on the Lord of the Pit here. There we see a safe haven from Frank. Interesting little card from the dark. An attack with Mahamoti Jin for 5 towards Gideon, so he's going to drop to 17. So Gideon is also under the 20 life mark right now. Actually, Avert's trying to play a Pyrotechnics on Sarah Angel, but that's a sorcery, so it's not possible. And that means that Avert's also taking 4 damage through the air with the Sarah Angel, and I'm using my demonic hordes again. What I'm going to try to do now is try to really target uh, Gideon to make sure that he cannot recast his Sulkanar the Swamp King. And ooh, playing the Hive. So the Hive, five to cast, five and tap, and you get a 1-1 one, one flying wasp token. What I love about it, they're called giant wasps, but it's just a 1-1. One, one. Anyway. Ooh, mana drain on what? On the pyrotechnics. Okay, so there's just too much happening here. Avert casting Pyrotechnics to try to destroy the Sarah Angel. And we see a Mana Drain being cast by Frank. That means he gets five mana next turn. And we just see a pass turn by Avert. It kind of looks like Avert is kind of stuck. He needs maybe Jam Day Tome or some kind of card draw engine to get kind of back into action. And he's got the beautiful Rock Hydra, but it's, it's with this board, it's not going to be very useful. And another counter by the Taggle Maggot on the Mahamoti Jin. It's now Gideon's turn. I wonder what he can do. Going through his hand. He's got a Boomerang and a Detonate. There's not really a good target for Detonate. I guess he could target my Knowledge Fold. Do you really want to? And the nice thing about Knowledge Fold is in response, I can sacrifice it. it even when it's tapped, it doesn't matter. I wonder what he's going to do. He's probably going to attack, right? Because this is the last turn that the Mahamoti is alive. So he's attacking Frank here through the air for five. I love the aggressiveness of these players. Just a lot of fun. And now Frank could... Yeah, so he's blocking with the Wall of Error. And because the Mahamoti Jin is now a 5-1 because of the Tackle Maggot, Mahamoti is actually going to die from that block. He could now play his Boomerang if he wants to, to Boomerang his Mahamoti, deciding not to. And he's putting the Taggle Maggot on my Demonic Hordes. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. And there's the Untap here by Frank. Is he gaining life again from his Ivory Tower? Probably. Looks like they're discussing a few things here. Here and there. I think they're talking about, like, if he could... What's happening now is um, 
Frank is using half Dane to copy Rock Hydra, and Vesuvian Doppelganger could possibly copy half Dane, and then half Dane, as half Dane, he can copy Power and Toughness of Rock Hydra, so he can have a lot of 12 12s. But I think he decides to keep it a Mamo to Jin in the end, which I think is a good decision. I mean, a 5 6 flyer right now with this board states, it's better than a beautiful 12 12 Hydra because it just doesn't fly, it has no evasion. We see Frank gaining some more life, by the way, he's going up to 22. I'm kind of jealous of all that life gain in his deck. And now he's casting an Air Elemental 4-4 Flyer. And of course, he only has to pay the two blue because he still had the mana from the Mana Drain. There we see an attack. At least he's not attacking me. That's good. He's attacking Avert for four. And he's attacking Gideon for six. Wow. So I'm still on 15 here. Things could be worse. Gideon quite low now on 11. Destroying a land now on the side of Avert. I guess it's his turn. It looks like we're chatting a little bit. Uh, also using my Knowledge Vault, putting a card under there. So two cards under the Knowledge Vault and one card in my hand. Having to pay, of course, the three upkeep and also getting counter from the Taggle Maggot. Oh, the Taggle Maggot's so funny. And, ooh, playing a rag, man. That's so cool. Two black and two, three black and tap. Look at target opponent's hand. And, and he has to uh, then discard a creature card in his hand. So he has to have a creature card, but it's pretty cool. Card from the Dark, very flavorful. If you've read the Dark lore, if you've read the book, the novel, um, it, Rackman has a big part in that book. Here we see Avert. Is he counting his lance? He's counting his lance. Okay, is there then Fireball or another big beefy creature or something? Tapping so much right now. What's going to happen? Huge fireball! Wow! Targeting a lot of creatures here. So he's targeting the fire elemental, the air elemental, and he's targeting Sarah Angel with one fireball. So that's a huge fireball. So fireball of what, 14, 15 or something? Because remember, with fireball, you've got to pay again for a new target. So one, red, and X. And every time you choose a new target, you've got to pay again. And the damage is divided equally. So he's dealing 12 damage in total, taking out three creatures. That's actually pretty good. But with this board, it kind of feels like it hardly makes a dent. And there is Glasses of Urza by Gideon. What can he do here? Glass of Urza, one to cast, by the way, tap and look at target opponent's hand. Wow, what a crazy, crazy match. This is just the first part. There will be a second part. Maybe you're wondering, why are you stopping the video? I want to see the whole thing. I know what you mean, but you have to realize this is already an hour in and my editing software, my computer, I mean, it's, this is a lot of calculating power. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to cut this uh, episode here on Timmy Talks in two parts. This is the first part, so the first hour of the game. Next week, I'm going to post the second part of the game and you can see the rest of the match and how this whole crazy scenario is going to end. Um, I hope that my commentary and also the cards that I'm showing and the live totals, that that kind of clarifies for you what is actually happening in the game. Uh, it, it is pretty tough to keep track of everything, I have to admit, but I'm having a lot of fun looking back at this. I can't wait to make the second part for you because it's so funny. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of um, EDH old school. By the way, would love to hear from you. And if you like this content, please like, use that thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, and also you can consider becoming a patron of Timmy Talks and you can do that via Patreon. The cool thing is if you become a, a patron, you're supporting the content that you love, but also we actually have an EDH group on our Discord server. So if you like old school EDH, might be a reason for you to join as well. Anyway, you can always just check it out and see if it's something for you, starting with a dollar. Talking about patrons and all that stuff, let's go to the end scroll. Let's take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. And I'll see you guys next week.
Ik het als ik het als samba kan zien.